We're going to look at and listen at the result of the, the postmortem of the six kids that who have died a few um, weeks ago in South Africa. So this is a final um, answer. So, yep, like I said, you know, we should be able to get this answer soon enough. Let's listen in to this uh, press conference and get him to explain to us what is the cause of death for these kids, Colombia, okay? So we know it's the chemical poison. Who so. are joined by officials from other government departments whose line of work is relevant to the foodborne problem in Naledi. As said before, they visited 84 spaza shops in search of the evidence of a chemical, which by then we had already believed was responsible for the illnesses and fatalities that befell our nation, especially in Naledi. So wait, you'll remember, ladies and gentlemen, we emphasized that three possible agents were responsible for this malady. And we said it's a biological agent, in which case it will be called food poisoning, or a chemical agent or a physical agent. Looking at the signs and symptoms of the children, we settled on a chemical agent. And so we excluded the issue of food poisoning, because food poisoning specifically in medicine means the food was contaminated by bacteria or their toxins. That means for food poisoning to occur, the agent must either be animal or plant-based, and it's usually uh, bacteria or their toxins. In this case, we excluded them, and said you are in search for a chemical. Uh, and that work was of this month with mop-up operations done on Friday, the 25th October. This operation was done under the auspices of the, an instruction by experts from the National Institute of Communicable Diseases, which is represented today here uh, by the deputy director of this institution, Dr. Natalie uh, Mayer, sitting at our extreme uh, uh, right. On Saturday, chasing a chemical, we had actually at that time believed this organophosphate. We're simply taking this from the symptoms. And so it, it so happened that it so happened that that we were we were actually right. Organophosphate is not one substance but a group of substances which are usually used in agriculture or as pesticides. The organophosphate identified in this instance is called terbifos, T-E-R-B-U-F-O-S, F-O-S. So um, Dr. Aaron Mutsualeri has just explained to us that, uh, yes, the toxicology report has confirmed that the kids were poisoned by a guanophosphate compound. And as I said before in my previous videos, that oh, there's a Organophosphate is a family name. Think of as it as a family name. There's under that name, there's different compounds. This one is Tebifos, but it is classified according to that classification that it's a organophosphate called Tebifos. So it is, yeah. So he's going to explain a little bit more about that. But I think I'm going to cut this video because all of the things that in he talks about are the things that I've actually already explained to you to about each this. One um, of if you want to look at it, you can go to my previous videos uh, when I heard about but this case I do that, that I it need is to explain in, that you know, preliminary, um, I was leaning towards organophosphate based on the severity of the symptoms. And obviously, like I said, carbamate can cause the same symptoms as well, but not as severe because of the binding of what we see in uh, as I said, there are when the compound binds to this acetylcholinesterase enzyme. So it will still, for kids, it will still be as, as really 
as poisonous, as deadly as you see right now in South Africa. So it's a chemicals that is a schedule medicines, organophosphate are scheduled, you can find, if you find an organophosphate lying around, you should inform the authorities, it will be illegal to have one lying around, being used for, for people, illegal migrants, um, because people who have to um, and have license to hold this uh, one of first phase are trained, have license that's been issued by them. They use specifically it's agriculture, as I've said in my last video. So you can go back, not last video, the video, the first video when I'm explaining about the differences between threat poisoning and organophosphate and the cover meat when that. Um, Environmental Health was telling that the carbon meat is with organophosphate, and I said, no, it's, it's wrong. It's not. It's actually Friday, separate October, uh, uh, classification, but they do work on the same receptor. So let's uh, listen into this video. And uh, yes, so we know now. So the, the investigation is still continuing. They haven't found the source yet. So like I said, I don't have a batch number. Finding a little bit of We're snacks in someone else's pocket doesn't tell you anything if you don't have a batch number. Okay? Because because they they obviously kids died from consuming contaminated cup. snacks. And yet it is, uh, you would assume that it comes from that shop. But the idea that you have to message it with the shop, it is, I think they want to be sure. They don't want to accuse people. This yada yada, all this law. But we know, um, pharmaceutically that is possible that you wouldn't not all of that food Grams that a person consumes they will be contaminated if it's actually due to police. accidental poisoning so i mean they will still need to investigate and look now, at all those the shots there until they can find the source because i mean it is a very serious issue i don't understand why they let it go for so long people, i mean should have settled this thing last year and, and we really put it things together last year because now they have these kids died all to all of them and of within an hour five of them after consuming this thing so they cannot hide it anymore they cannot lie and put it been on it and do all sorts of things. I mean, that we have got they the just have to answer, you know, and even with this last, um, conference, all they borrow all these people, but, you know, it just it tells you these people really need stated. to go and retire and bring in people who are it expertise, except for Dr. Aaron Maturedi and a couple of, and the lady from NICD, Not the very cause of death. Competent, in all of them from NICD, they're very cases. competent. Like if I tell you, you these are the people that told the world before, that this Omicron. We are so not yet they aware are of that, very but it competent, professional. But, but the rest still, of them, this one, environmental health, I don't know. I don't know, guys, whether you, any, you are actually a benefiting from this as a South African taxpayer from environmental health professional. If they cannot enforce, and even the public safety people enforce the law and, you know, making sure people are compliant if they're not and be able to remove the licensing it is something that south africa the laws there it's an enforcement it's a governance issue so they can't be coming over and telling you that oh yeah they're having trouble because uh you know they don't have any law it's just the enforcement issue even the fact that they still allow illegal migrants to trade where they actually migration laws specifically say if informal in trading, moment, people need to be invested in this that five million in via swap kept in the a kept hold for them to so enter that market. Have been sent but that is also another problem with ANC. And we are That's still waiting for the results. Sitting at 40%. This means that I while organophosphate was found this point, in the body of just not performing. It's we're all about the government. If the organophosphate was do also this found in the spaza shops, so that we can scientifically link the events. It is also important to mention that police did find a packet of chips in the pocket of one of the children who demised. This was also sent for analysis, and the results were out, and they were found to be negative. That means this substance, organophosphate, which killed the children, was not able to be detected on the packet of chips that was found in the pockets of one of the children. 
Now, let's try to analyze the present situation that we are faced with. When we mentioned that we are sending teams to search for signs of chemicals in these puzzle shops, some people on social media were very skeptical because they reasoned, and I think as ordinary people, it's understandable. They reasoned that if indeed there are chemicals in the spaza shops that affect that and even kill this ch some of these children, why would spaza shop owners not equally be affected? Because they should also be exposed to the same substance. It is very important to explain this. It is known medically that children are more susceptible to pesticide toxicity and other environmental toxicants than adults. This is due to several factors which are mostly physiological. The first one is body mass. Children have a smaller body mass than adults and therefore a given dose of pesticides can have more severe impact on a child because of the smaller body size. Number two, developing organs. Children's organs are still developing, making them more vulnerable to the effects of pesticides because they are not able to. They are not able to handle them. Excuse me. Number three is the root of exposure. Children are affected by acute pesticide poisoning and chronic effects of exposure through ingestion, inhalation, and dermal conduct. Uh, you also aware of behavioral patterns of children, I'm sorry, before even coming to the root. The behavioral pattern of children is different from adults. We all know we have got children. One of their well-known behaviors is hand to mouth and hand to object. Adults don't usually do that. Children do that quite often whenever they've touched things. And this exposes them more than adults. And as I said, the root of exposure uh, can be ingestion, inhalation, or dermal contact. That organophosphate can even enter your body through contact with your skin and hence can affect you from, even from contaminated clothing. In other words, this organophosphate doesn't have to be in your mouth or inhalation to, 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 to affect you. It can even You won't get any sponsor shop owner being equally affected Hence, you won't get even the packets of these snacks being equally affected, okay? So the idea that even when you open the snack, you should find that compound in there, it's also misleading on itself, okay? Because it could be the top one, two, three, or four, the top ones, because this is, if indeed, this is accidental, which we suspect it is accidental, based on the fact, the history and that we've had from public health of inspectors and all of them, how these illegal migrants keeps these chemicals next to food, that organophosphate, even, you know, the the, the, the outside area, the outside part of it, you know, because if the kids, are uh, the packets with contaminated, their hands are going to be contaminated. So they open it, the hands are contaminated. Whatever they pick it up and into hands and mouth, it's going to be contaminated. So you really have to think about, like he's, I think he goes to this video and talk about how how actually very, uh, how easy for you to catch these things, even in your clothes. Because I saw people, young kids doing this and trying to dispose these uh, snacks in some township in school. And I was so worried on their behalf because I felt like parents uh, and the public safety officer that should be the one that doing this because it, this product could be contaminated but as usual it's environmental health public safety people 
I don't feel confident that they know People what they're doing, and I think it's a, it's a waste team. of taxpayers' dollar if they me. actually so, which means don't uh, do their job properly, they're not safeguard the community, because that should be their bread and butter, according to their, you know, their qualification, to be able to advise and to monitor. As I said, people do not children, perform. It's the about competency here we're looking at. So it's let's continue to listen anyway. Now, I think it's important now that we have identified the agent to help even our health professionals because it does not necessarily mean all of them, especially in rural clinics, EMS staff, etc. It doesn't mean they understand this. We wish to advise them and the medical personnel in hospitals and clinics as follows. Signs and symptoms of organophosphate toxicity, severe diarrhea, vomiting, foaming at the mouth, nose, tears flowing very readily from the eyes without a person crying, and constant urination. Now, if you listen to these signs and symptoms, it's water through diarrhea, through vomiting, foaming at the mouth, at the nose, tears, urine. But there's another area where this water is flowing and that's where the cause of death usually occurs, in the lungs. Water literally leaks in the lungs and into the alveoli and they block them. That's why it was reported that some before they died, when you turn purple, it means you are not getting enough oxygen because the purple color is a mixture of, of hemoglobin and oxygen, uh, I mean, sorry, and, and carbon dioxide. The purple color, let me repeat, because it might appear in the press that the minister has said this. Let me repeat, the purple color for a person who is dying is a mixture of hemoglobin and carbon dioxide. When hemoglobin, which carries oxygen, when it has got enough oxygen, you look pink. Once you change color to purple, it means oxygen is not entering your lungs, and that's what happened to some of these kids because there was water in their lungs. Now, we are advising health workers that apart from supportive treatment, which they must give, we wish to advise that the antidote of organophosphate and carbamate is intravenous atropine injection. We also wish to advise, and this advice we got from the NICD, Dr. Mayet will have to expand further because it's important. We used to advise that when health workers are faced with this possible organophosphate poisoning, doctors need to use aflatoxin. This is an app designed by the poisoning center, which advised them step by step on what to do. Thank you very much. Doctor, maybe before questioning and anything, can you explain this app? While everybody's still listening. Yes, uh, we now know the cause of the death of these um, young kids. Um, it's organophosphate. And it's Tabifas, so it's a very dangerous compound, and just be, you wouldn't find it anywhere, anyway, in as a person. So, like I said, it is a very schedule. It is a poison. It's a poison. Um, chemicals. The other name that in South Africa is classified that way. So, um, after all of that, you know, a group of migrants in South Africa, they went on the, they were interviewed by a reporter and just listen to what they said to this reporter. After all of this knowledge, knowing that kids have died as a result of organophosphate, um, uh, you know, poisoning and they still went about and questioning the authorities that it's um, it's not as a result of them so it's this dangerous behavior of some of them you can tell these people are illiterate i don't understand why you have these people there south africans why is anc still have these people there what do they want what do they want south africans to do why are they having these people there can 
can they go back to their country? Can't they go back to their country? Yeah. So I just, I, I mean, I'll be very upset as well to just hear these people. They just don't get it. Just listening to this video, they just don't get it. Don't get it. Don't get it. How many years foreigners are in South Africa? So only this year is killing. This is a pro political propaganda. So how long you are this? Is it so many people who are eating the Zimbas? Who they how we killing? Okay, who's the, who killed it and you die with the Zimba? Who is the dark person? Who is die? Or who is which is the sick person? Just people people who are making only the political people. Which one is the die? The, the children's name is who? From which house? From where? Who shop, from who shop you are selling these things? But so let's. There's been children that have passed away on allegations that some of the Simba, of the chips, the Zimba chips that okay. are being sold okay, I, have, I, I, have, have had an indication and this is why they have been hurt. Now, you can't say who has died. There's some people that have passed okay, on. Investigations are ongoing. So why not killing me? Maybe you have health or you have to uh, shake my body. Now I eat in front of you, Zimba. What you do it now? Okay. Zimba, how he is killing? Okay, if he's Zimba is killing people, where is the pro, uh, this this product? Where is it making these Zimbas? Is making you have to ask. Show me the expiring date here. Okay. Show me the expiring date and show me the date of expiry of the Zimba. Front of the TV. Yeah. Show me. The South Africa going to see the expiring date today. This is not. Another one, people, many people who are holding this one. No, 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 you must see that this is the expiry date. What's this now? This is the one. So I still don't care about it. I need to spoil it now. I'm going to expire in So I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Can I open the camera, Yako? So when the thing is done, 